What's going on, good people? Rich here. School in the building. What's happening? Hey, it's your girl, Ray P on the mic. What's going on, everybody? Hey, back at it again with another episode of the Culture Garden Podcast. Hold on, Ray P, real quick. I don't know yes. if it's the gold in the hair or the, the way the light hitting, the skin hey, looking, the skin looking, you know what I'm saying? Oh. I don't know what the routine is. Yeah, I don't know if y'all watching on YouTube. I'm really fine. Hey, Ray P can't. I don't know hey. if she's right after this or something. <laughs> You won't blow. Know, could it be known? I don't know, but Ray P came. She, I don't know. She got. She told yeah. somebody particular to watch this week. <laughs> twenty twenty three wow. is your year, lady. It's Period. our year. Twenty twenty. It's twenty twenty. Me. Mm-hmm. Period. I just want to say that. But um, mm. so you know, I started working out again. Um, so I had got my hair done today. Obviously, you see the fresh color. It's fresh. fresh you know, you, you got us. You got a little glow. Um, my homeboy gonna uh, respond to my IG story like, "Oh, I seen the walk in here. I was starting to get worried." <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, 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 if y'all hey. follow, if y'all don't follow Ray P on um, Instagram, she's been posting, you know, walking, you know, that got a walking friend and all that stuff. So they've been yeah. posting it, and uh, yeah, man, definitely looks. You can see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you see how they do me. Hey, that's Damn. The difference. I have to remind y'all every now and again, and by every now and again, I mean every two weeks, unless my hair is braided, that she can do this too. Okay, yeah. that's a normal know. Wednesday. We ain't that's even a normal know. Wednesday. Yeah, man. Sure. My appointment's even... supposed to be tomorrow. We ain't even talk about seven no more, Ray. That, that's a whole different Ray. That's a whole different ray. Seven no more. If you're in the Charlotte area, check out that IG page for Charlotte happenings, food, and entertainment. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> How you feeling, man? Oh, I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great. It's been a lovely week. Oh, uh, my bad, Ray. What was you about to say? Nothing. Oh, okay. I thought I cut you off. My bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad everybody doing all right. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everybody out there listening and watching is doing all right as well. Um, we yeah. definitely appreciate y'all as always. Thank you for continuing to come back week after week and hear what we have to say about these movies. Yes. If you are new to us, um, this is just a podcast for the culture when it comes to film and television. We are cinephiles. We're movie buffs. We know all genres of movie, not just for the culture. Um, so we'll actually talk about a lot of different movies throughout, but we specify within our culture, getting making sure these flowers and our actors and actresses get the flowers they deserve. Or I said flowers. These films and these shows and these actors and actresses, filmmakers um, get the flowers that they deserve. So we appreciate y'all joining us. Um, Absolutely. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to the Golden Globes last night. Um, they definitely was handing out a few you know, flowers and some bouquets and stuff. So uh, shout out to uh, all the winners. Um, Tyler Tyler James, right? Tyler James Williams. Tyler James Williams. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, as well as the Queen, yo gal. You sent me a text message ASAP. Yeah, I sent one in the group yeah. chat. Like, yeah, let's go, yeah. Angela. Yeah, let's go, yeah. Angela Bassett. I'm not uh, playing by Angela. Quinta. Yeah, Quinta. Quinta. Zendaya. Yes. Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah. Yeah. Have you any of y'all watched Euphoria? Oh my God, it's so good. Okay. Let me tell you, Zendaya deserved. She deserves every single award. She is okay. acting. She is putting on a clinic. Okay. You know, they said the Disney's girls don't transition well. Yeah. Now Zendaya, she's her. You said I'm okay. bigger than that. She's her. She's sounds her. Like, sounds like we're gonna be covering season three. Sounds like we it. got a while. I think it's got like two years. Yeah, you know, you know how be playing this. <laughs> HBO don't play fair. Um, yeah, I think Eddie Murphy, I'm mean, not think, but I know Eddie Murphy got an award as well, like a uh, mm-hmm. lifetime achievement award almost. Um, yeah. so shout out to him, Eddie Murphy, a fool, and shout out to Regina Hall. Shout just out to that. Regina Hall, Queen. Yes, just, just because, just because. But, um, yeah, you guys can see the title right now. We're talking about Juice today. Um, excited mm-hmm. to be having this conversation with y'all because I had. We'll get we'll get there in a second. Ooh, um, okay. No, not anything like that. I was just about to say. So a lot of these films, especially the older ones, the ones I've seen forever, um, I've never. I was talking to school a little bit about this. I've never like had to sit down and think about it. Like look at the movie mm-hmm. from a different mindset. Yeah. Um, so I went through some you know ups and downs while I was watching it, and then got to a good landing point because 
it's got some it's got some stuff with it. It's got some stuff that you know needs a little tune up. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, you know, we'll we'll talk about it in classic or not. We'll get to all that. But um, as far as stats, oh, before we even get into that, um, don't forget we got y'all. If y'all haven't, you know, already been checking that out, that's on our link tree. Uh, we have the best man final chapters up right now, and like I said, we're about to rev up. Um, I think we're actually going to do. I, I said Bel Air, but that's the end of February. Harlem comes out on Amazon Prime. Um, mm-hmm. early February school. That, that ain't really real house. I don't know. I don't know if you're really going to be joining in on on Harlem, but uh, <laughs> we'll do that early February and then get into Bel Air and all that. I might drop by. Yeah, he <laughs> might stop by. And even Not though we're because, not it, even though we're not listen. I'm a fan as well. I'm a fan of y'all. So I would definitely watch it just for y'all. Like, so for sure. For sure. Love, love, man. Yes, yes, yes. But even though we're not covering this show, BMF came back last Friday. BMF came back and um, entertained the show, entertained the first episode. Me and Raven getting weak at a certain scene that came on episode one. Uh, I don't think you watched it yet. No. Okay, we'll talk about it later. But anyway, let's get into Juice. Talk about what we're here for today. As far as stats go, it was released January 17th, 1992. So next week, it will be 31 years old, which is insane to think about. Crazy. Sheesh. Um, It was shot around March, April of 1991 and then came Mm -hmm. out, you know, nine months later. So um, it was directed by and written by Ernest R. Dickerson. And the screenplay was blocked by Gerard Brown. Um, Ernest Dickerson is a longtime cinematographer for Spike Lee. Um, he's worked mm. on Max, Do the Right Thing, School's Days, She's Gotta Have It. Um, Everything. Yeah, he All my on- favorite Spike Lee joints. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's worked on Crush Groove. Um, it's funny, you can even tell like he has the famous Spike Lee dolly shot in this movie. Yep. Um, yeah. And when Q is going back to the DJ spot to compete after yeah. the, you know, the robbery mm-hmm. and all that. That's a classic trademark, Spike Lee. Um, so you see all of that there. Also, <laughs> also, um, I don't know if y'all had ever gone back and listened to our DMX episode. We did an episode on School and Myself on DMX the Actor. And uh, it, it was a fun episode, to say the least. But he directed Never Die Alone, which if you heard that episode, you know how I feel about Never Die Alone. It's one of the Man. best bad movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, yes. it's, it's Hall of Fame, good bad movie. <laughs> like, I, I want to talk about it one day. We'll get there maybe, but I don't know. Um, but shout out to him for that movie and all the unintentional comedy. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, the it was originally written eight years prior to the release. So it was written mm-hmm. in the early 80s. Oh. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of like his film noir. It wasn't yeah. really, and Tupac went on to talk about this. It wasn't really like a hip hop movie. Um, I want to have this conversation with y'all here in a second. He said it wasn't a hip hop movie. It was a good movie that had hip hop in it. Um, and if yeah. you place it in any decade, whatever that would have been, if jazz was the sound, it would have had jazz in it. If yeah. you know, rock, it would have had rock in it, if that's what the story was about. So it was more so about the story than the actual, um, you know, hip hop hood genre that, you know, it, it gets classified as. Omar Epps even went to say that they ad libbed a lot of the movie in the vernacular because on script it was like, hey, Jive Turkey. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they got permission from Ernest Dickerson to like make this sound like 1990, like you know, yeah. 1990 Harlem. So they uh ended up doing it that way. It had a budget of an estimated five million dollars, and it made that and more in the opening weekend, and it made 20.1 million. Um, not worldwide, it didn't release in all theaters, just globally, but or globally, just um domestically, but it did make 20 million, so 15 uh, million dollar profit, not on any streaming platform right now. So you have to rent it or own it. And as far as the inspiration, he got the inspiration for Jews from a novel called Man Child in the Promised Land. It's written by Clyde Brown. It's an autobiographical book. Um, it came out in 1965 and really was just about his time growing up in 1940s and 50s Harlem. And Ernest mm-hmm. R. Dickerson read the book and said, I want to tell a story like that. And here we go. We got Juice. Um, yeah. Also, all three of us will appreciate this. Shout out to Tax Stone. Yes, sir, Ari. Yes. If you were OG right. tax season listener and, you know, tax ain't been around for a while, um, give that man his trial. But Jeez. if you uh, are OG tax season listener, um, Eric B. and Rakim know the ledge intro. That's classic. Yes. That was the intro yeah. to his podcast. So shout out to Tax. Be safe, right? though. Be safe, though. Right? P actually met Tax. Hey, 
I did. I have. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I I talk to him on Snap. I ain't never really meet him, but yeah, <laughs> yeah that be having Scoby hit me up like, yeah, man, you know, texting me back today, random. <laughs> yeah, that's my, nigga, that's my guy. I'm um, weak. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Tax, man. Um, as far as awards, they had one nomination for the best film at Mistfest. Um, I don't really I think it's like a Sundance type of up and coming film. Mm-hmm. It didn't win, but it was nominated for that. Um, and let's talk about the cast a little bit. We had Omar Epps as Q. This was his first mm-hmm. film. Jermaine Hopkins, Jermaine Hopkins. The, the veteran the of the group. Um, he was Eric, aka Steel. Khalil Kane as Raheem, the oldest of the bunch. He was 26 at the time of filming. Yeah. And it's crazy because he passed as a high school student. He looked the same age as everybody else. He looked the same age as the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody else was uh, uh Omar and, and Jermaine were 17 and, and Tupac was 19 at the time of filming. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they all looked the same age. Um, Tupac Shakur is Bishop. Let me just take a little time. Let's have a Tupac conversation. Okay. So obviously, I know people talk about him as a rapper pri- primarily you know i like to consider him as more of an icon than anything like i think he Absolutely. his overall presence i think is what appeals but artistically like i feel that we got robbed you know obviously he passed way too soon but mm-hmm. as fans i was more so looking forward to his acting career than whatever Absolutely. else he had to do with music i think yeah. Tupac's still an actor yep. yes um yes what is your favorite Ray P? What's your favorite Tupac role? Um, now I'm having a I'm trying to think of Tupac roles. Well, we have this, we got uh, um, we got Lucky and Poetic Justice, we got Poetic Birdie, Justice, we got Birdie, Birdie. and Blood of Room. Um, he was in Gridlock. I've never seen Gridlock, uh, but I know I'm missing Gridlock's something. Good. Else. I know I'm missing some stuff too, all of that, but of what we just named, I'm gonna say Birdie. Same. Birdie's mine. Yeah, it's cool. What about I'm, you? I, I'm going. I'm gonna stick to where we at right now. I, I think he put on a uh, a clinic in this movie, man. He was mm-hmm. he was fantastic, bro. He, mm-hmm. was, he was fantastic as Bishop, rolling Bishop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, you know what's really interesting about that school? Like this is mm-hmm. his first film, but this isn't um this isn't Top of the World 1996 Tupac. No, you know what I mean. This is 1992 mm-hmm. digital underground. Like people don't even really know him. Like he more so hammers background dancer. Yeah, and at the time of filming, he didn't have an album out. He was actually recording Tupacalypse Now. Tupacalypse, mm-hmm. Tupacalypse Now came out um November 12th, 1991. This film yeah. came out January 92, but they shot it in March April. So he was Whoa. kind of relatively quote unquote unknown, but known around circles. Yeah, well, I was even going to say, um, looking into this movie, he was doing a lot of thespian things, you know, telling them to call him Bishop on set. Don't yeah. call me Tupac, I'm Bishop. Like, that's okay. a lot. Method you know, yeah, method yes, acting. he was doing a lot of that. So shout yeah, out to Pac, yeah. man. To follow up on what you said, my fault, Ray, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's about I, Pac. Go I was just going to say, like, going back to the method acting, like the scene where um, he shoots and kills Raheem, like he was crying. Mm-hmm. During that scene, like he ended up crying, and Omar Epps and Jermaine Hopkins, like that's when they were sold. Like, yo, this dude is really like an actor. Like, he's into it. Yeah. The weight and the emotion of the scene, he was so wrapped up to, to it that, like, yo, I just shoot, I just shot my best friend. I just killed my best friend. Like, yeah. all of that came out. So, I mean, it was incredible to watch. He stands out. Like, if you didn't know who he was, like, you were gonna know. Like, he was just yeah. a star. Yeah. He, um, I think Omar Epps was in an interview and he said that like when he walks in the room, like there's certain people that walk in the room and all the attention shifts. Like, mm-hmm. and that's just kind of what mm-hmm. he was. It's just saying that if nothing said that, like him playing Bishop, go ahead, Ray. Can we give honorable mention? Cause this might be my for real favorite performance, but it's not a movie. Tupac on different world as Piccolo. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's, nah, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Real good answer. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, and what's even more funny, um, school and, and Ray, he didn't even, he wasn't, he got this role by chance. He stumbled into this. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple different people. It depends on who's telling the story. Um, mm-hmm. he went to this audition with Tretch from Naughty by Nature. Tretch is actually in this film. He's a part of Rodman's mm-hmm. crew. Um, yeah. they even mentioned his name there and Money B from Digital Underground. 
So depending on who tells the story, he either went with one of those two. But when he was there, somebody said, like, yo, read this. So he ended up mm-hmm. just reading the script and got so into it that they were like, yo, you kind of, because he read for Q. And he also mm-hmm. read for Bishop. Oh, interesting. And when he got to Bishop, it was just kind of like, yo, I think this is our Bishop. Like, this is this is it. Yeah, um, I, I read that too. I heard uh, Ernest Dickerson said that he had a hard time trying to find Bishop. That he, he had already you know, audition six or seven people audition. And, you know, like you said, Pac was just killing it. And he was like, you know, hold on, re- read this, you know. And as soon as he left, he was like, yo, got our bishop. Like, and it goes back to our, our one of our early, that, that five heartbeats. When you're a director, you know, you write certain things, you have a, a image in your head of, of a person that you mm-hmm. wrote. And Tupac was just sheesh so that's yeah that's like one of my favorite things like it's like writing something writing a character in your head just being a novel like that writer knows exactly who they picture in their head like and everybody Mm -hmm. else reading it has their own image of somebody so it's always funny um seeing that and just another interesting tupac fact real quick before we get to the rest of the cast but um like i say they were filming march april of 1991 in harlem right so mm-hmm. in that during that time period, there was an incident where uh, it was all over the news where somebody had left their baby in in the dumpster, yada yada yada. And Omar Epps was saying like, "Hey, you know, I'm from Omar Epps from Brooklyn, like so." It was like sad to say, like this is a terrible reality, but this wasn't really mm-hmm. news to me. Like this was yeah, being something like that. And um, yeah. he said it, it it shook Tupac in a different way. And he said one day they was on set and he told him to come to his trailer and he was rapping. And Omar F still wasn't picking it up. And he said later on that mm-hmm. year, his album came out. And obviously, Brenda's Got a Baby Brenda. was a song that he mm-hmm. made based off of his time mm-hmm. filming Juice and that incident that took place. So I always wow. thought that was just a crazy fact as Man. well. Um, Brooklyn Harris, he plays... Uh, she plays Lovey... No, no. What is her name? Um, I can't remember. Whoever uh, Raheem's baby mom is. I can't remember the character's name. But the reason I'm mentioning her up is, do, does she look like a uh, Davina to y'all? No, no, she doesn't look like Davina from um, Blazing Canaan. No. Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, Samuel Jackson as Trip. We have appearances from Queen Latifah, Trip. Flex, George Gore the Second as Brian. He's obviously from uh, my wife and the kids. Childhood actor mm-hmm. in the nineties. Yes. Donald Faison. Donald Faison was in the film in the um, high school scene. He actually auditioned mm-hmm. to play the role of, of Q or Bishop. Actually, my apologies. Yep. Yeah, the role can't of Bishop. See it. Definitely can't see that. Hell no. Nah. Eric Sermon. <laughs> he was in the bar scene when it got robbed. Part of EPMD. Mm-hmm. Um, D Nice was in this film. He was at the DJ competition. Um, okay. I don't know if y'all noticed. Yeah. He was near Queen Latifah, but you can definitely see a young D Nice in there. Uh, we see Fab Five yeah. Freddy, and then we have Cindy Heron from In Vogue playing Yolanda. Mm-hmm. We will definitely Sheesh. have a lot of conversation. Um, yep. But yeah, school. <laughs> Classic or not? Classic. Ray P? It's juice. Classic. I think that goes without Classic. saying. It's classic. Without without question. Um, the real question is, do you think it's a hood movie? Mm. Damn, it, no. It, it it's a hood movie and then it turns into a horror movie. <laughs> it starts off as a hood movie, but it takes a extreme, you know, turn. But yeah, it starts I off as a hood movie. I don't think it's a hood movie at all. I think that so this is 1992, and at this time mm-hmm. you have New Jack City and you have Boys in the Hood, like that kind of mm-hmm. made the mark for 1991, right? And introduce mm-hmm. this whole new world of black life, um, as they want to say it. And it got with juice coming out when it did, I think it got lumped in that category. But it goes back to what I was saying about like the hip hop in it, like whatever element was gonna be around. I think you can tell this story all the way around. Um, it's more so like about peer pressure to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, somebody described it, I read an article that called it a psychological thriller. And mm. I can see that. I can see that. I can definitely see I that. See I that. Think that it's told the it just chose to tell our story in that fashion. But I don't know if I call it a hood movie, but it is it is four dudes in the hood, but they ain't hood dudes. They ain't even Bishop ain't really a hood dude. He's just somebody that kind of so me. many hood elements, the bodega, the but that's, but that's not that's even hood. Like, that's just black. That's just culture. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. I think I got the hookup as a hood movie. I think that shit yeah. on Tubi is like hood movies. Juice is a coming of age story. And I know those other movies are probably coming of age stories as well. Um, but Juice is Juice. Like, I don't know something yeah. about it. And maybe it's the caliber of acting that also prevents it from being just a another quote unquote hood movie but um hood movie. yeah nah it's not a hood movie for me it's a black movie obviously uh you will get your black car revoked if you say you haven't um seen juice That's if it's on news. one of those lists of black movies you know um mm-hmm. yeah classic and culturally relevant absolutely yeah absolutely. significant okay. absolute classic gotcha. um it's funny I saw uh, something where Tupac described it as a modern day Shakespearean tragedy. It was actually an interview they had with all four of them. So he said a modern day Shakespearean tragedy that's about ambition. And when I thought of when when I read that or saw him say that, should I say, um, I thought about Othello. I I thought about literally the first thing that came to my head. Yeah, I thought about mm-hmm. oh, if if anybody's seen like the modern day oh with you know Mackay Pfeiffer, <laughs> Mackay and, Pfeiffer, and Julia Stiles, yeah, Josh Hartnett, man, I can't, yeah. man, they really tried to force Josh Hartnett on us. Um, <laughs> Told but, yeah, 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 it's kind of the same thing. It's about kids, and I think mm-hmm. all of the cast have said that this is about kids and youth and your environment and peer pressure. Um, I personally believe that this film should be showed to like every middle school and junior high student. Like, and I'm dead ass serious. Like, I think that the the message of peer pressure and who you are around, and I, maybe that's part of that because it was drilled in me growing up. Like, my pops uh-huh. was big on guilty by association. Yeah. Like, I know you a good kid. Yeah. Well, them people mm-hmm. you might be around all the time ain't. Like, and something mm-hmm. happens, you can go down with them just because. And you see that, especially with Q and Bishop. Like, Q, I don't know why Q just didn't go to school. <laughs> like just go to school, go to class. Cause yeah. obviously you don't want to be in this life. Yeah, you want to yeah. play hooky. And I've always been um fascinated with the idea of growing up in New York City. Like that's always fascinated me. That's got to be such a yeah. different experience. Yeah. I think you're outside a yep. lot earlier than most cities. Mm-hmm. Like, you kind of just on your own. You ha- mm-hmm. you can't afford to like it's so so much going on. Like you ain't your parents ain't walking you to school. You ain't going to no bus stop. Like yeah, figure it out. Yeah. Um. So it's a lot of that stuff going on. And Omar Epps said it was a kick in the butt for young black men to do something with their lives, regardless of them circumstances. And um, it's just about friendship, a crew doing everything together. You know, mm-hmm. even that record store scene, like I'm stealing for you, bro. Like we wrecking crew. We do everything. So just doing yeah. shit. Yeah. But that was interesting. Hood movie or not. I want to let us know what y'all think. If y'all think it was a hood movie, All yeah. everybody listening and watching, um, please let us know. Yeah, because um, I think it is. <laughs> nah, that's fair. But that's but fair. I agree with everything you guys are saying. Like it definitely mm-hmm. all of that, but it's just it has that hood element. Some like, hood shit. It's definitely there. some hood shit going yeah, on. Like, yeah, like yeah, there's some hood shit going that, on. That, still cooking, like that was the hoodest shit of a, of it all. <laughs> yeah, it's some cultural hood shit going on for sure. I don't want to take that away. I just mm-hmm. think like when I think about like I said, the two movies before this Boys in the Hood, New Jack City. There's gangsters in this movie, like straight up gangsters. Mm-hmm. This is more like an origin story for a gangster. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if Bishop would have made it, like his origin story, like I don't know right. if it's because Omar Epps is in both, but it's almost like a raising Canaan to me um, mm-hmm. yeah. in a sense. But did you have, mm, that's not really, how 90s did it feel to you? Oh. It felt very nice. Oh, like, do you? I, yeah. I guess my point is, did it age well? Nah, not even that. Like, do you think you can get a sixteen-year-old to watch Juice and like it? Or is yes. Juice too young? Matter of fact, when was the? Do you remember the first time you saw Juice? No, I have no, no idea. School. What about you? Nope, no idea when I saw Juice. No idea. Like, no, no idea. I I can't even guess. I really couldn't even guess to tell you. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. We always talk about first experience. Well, I, I definitely think I think you could definitely get a 16-year-old to sit down and watch Juice. I wonder if they'd appreciate it as much as we do. I always knew uh, that with movies. I doubt it. I think they might like it. Like, no. oh, no, that shit was cool. But 
it's not going to have the same impact because right. it's 31 it's years old. Yeah. Yeah. But the message is there. The message is clear, though. The message is clear. <laughs> yeah. And I like, think it aged well. It I'm, does. I'll be yeah. listen, I'll be I'll be 34 in June, and I still don't ever want to run a, run into a nigga like Bishop. I don't <laughs> ever want a friend like Bishop. I remember there was a uh there was a meme going around a while back about who was the most evil. And mm-hmm. I think it was Doughboy, Bishop. Old dog and Nino Brown, and whoever posted it, I remember responding to them and saying, um, Bishop was like the most evil person. Like, yeah, I would say Doughboy don't even count. He Doughboy don't even count. He's just living life as he needs to. Old dog was crazy. He's America's worst nightmare. Like, old dog was a nut, but Bishop was just straight up evil. Mm -hmm. Bishop really, he told us, but Bishop ain't give a fuck. Yeah, like you hit a point. I, I did have an um for a while. I was struggling to like really find Bishop's motivation. I know he was upset about like being, you know, not having. Any he told music. it. What's that? He told yeah. his. He told his motivation you know about the scene in, in Steele's house. Yeah, yeah, but it seemed like he flipped the switch and it went from zero to one hundred real quick. Like, damn, I, I'm sorry, I said that. Um. But it really went from zero to 100. And I got a little bit more information and it made a lot more sense. So Tupac, and they said this in the movie, but I never really like put it together. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was just somebody just talking shit. But in 1992, Tupac had an interview when he said like his father, because look, but before I even get into this, what y'all think about his pop? What do you think was going on with his pops? He There's probably all- was a Vietnam vet and he was that mine was fucked up. He clearly had some issues. So the mama left. You moved mm-hmm. back in with your mama. So you and your son in this granny house in this probably two bedroom apartment in Harlem. His daddy was crazy. He's sitting there in silent. And the way that he looked at him in that opening scene, like you didn't even ask. Your granny said, "Ask him if he wants something." You didn't even ask. Like was, you just stared at him begrudgingly. That. Not only that, he has an addiction of some sort, and I'm I'm guessing it's alcohol because he gave him five dollars. And what can five dollars in 1992 last you all day, or at least get you started? You know what I mean? That can get you a couple dr- drinks, an MD 2020 shit. So I, I was right with you, Rachel. I was like, this reminds me of dead presidents. Like this is somebody mm-hmm. who went to war and came back, and he's out of here. But yeah. Tupac was talking in an article in 1992, and like I said, they mentioned it in the movie. But his dad was a convict. He's an ex-convict. He was a jailhouse mm-hmm. lawyer. His dad got ran mm-hmm. through in jail, and, and they he confirmed said that in the article. Like that was a plot line that kind of got m- taken out of the movie. Rodimez mm-hmm. mentioned it, like you know what I'm saying. If you yeah. want to look for, you know, I heard your pops love being a jailhouse hoe. Like he when he said mm-hmm. that to Tupac, like I said, all these years I thought that was just. Niggas talking Some shit. shit. Talking yeah. shit. You know what I mean? That happens. But the way Tupac, Tupac, the way Bishop responds at that moment, like he really kind of goes nuts. And mm-hmm. then like, I just now found this out when I was doing research for this film. Like he said that, like that's that's who his dad is. And that connected his motivation, his character so much more for me as to mm-hmm. why he like I, my dad got no respect. He literally got ran through in prison by men. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The the he got mm-hmm. He was the lowest of the low. No respect, and he's fucked up because of it. Man. Like, and all the, you know, we know now as adults and therapy and unpacking and all that, but that's a lot. And I'm sure, it's like, yeah. Bishop had to go through all that. Like yeah. you said, mom left. Grandma don't know what's going on. Like, so mm-hmm. I can easily see how he was just fed up. Like, he reached the point where he said, I ain't shit. Like, this is the, these are the hands yeah. I was dealt. This is the life I was given. And I finally reached peace with that. Like, I'm cool. Even when he was watching that movie in Steele's apartment, that's how you go out. Like, he was already at at, at a Mm -hmm. high school age thinking about the way he was going to leave this earth. So that's what made him so scary because he really didn't care. Man, you just fucked me up, high key. I'm not even going to hold you. Yeah, Yeah, me too. I was content in thinking that he was just like off from the war because that's a story that we've seen maybe even in our own families like we know that 
but to know that that is mm-hmm. what was wrong with yeah. him and then now that you just said it i immediately thought of if bill street can talk um which i'm sure we'll get to at some point um Absolutely. not to drop any spoilers Absolutely. if you haven't seen it but that's what that immediately just reminded me of there's a scene mm-hmm. where uh bonnie is like you don't know what they're doing to me in here fuck Mm-hmm. Maybe we do. Yikes. Ah! Okay, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, nah, but listen, I, I share the same yeah. sentiment because mm-hmm. that was my one hey, thing with this yeah. film. Like, even from when I was a kid, like, what's going on with this pops? Like, I know mm-hmm. it's something, but I wish they just kind of said something about it. But mm-hmm. they took that storyline a little bit out, except yeah. for that line that Rodimer says. And when Got Tupac it. confirmed it in an interview, Mm-hmm. That gave me a whole lot of like a whole different perspective of that character and why he got because I'm like, all right, you went from one yeah. day, all right, I know Rodimez messing with you every day, but you went from that to like throwing a tantrum, like stepping to your boy, like I'm tired, we run from everybody, yeah. like, and I feel that, yeah, like, he flipped it all the way, yeah, he reached that break. So, my fault, school, we nah. gonna say something. Nah, you, I'm with Rachel. Like, wow, my head is over here blown. Like, <laughs> wow, because yeah, like, like listen, there's I'm a with um, you, like, I'm I, with you. I've seen the movie a lot, and I've seen that scene. And as I got an older, I put, you know, I made up my own things, you know. Mm-hmm. But damn, 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 that's that's yeah, good research, just brother. This- yeah, I appreciate you. Just for full disclosure, um, if anybody's interested, because it was a really good piece. It was the thirty juice at thirty, pretty much um, mm-hmm. covering it because it, it came out last year, obviously when it turned thirty years old. Um, the article is by Stereo Williams, and it's on RockTheBells.com. So okay. if you put in, if you go to Juice Rock the Bells on Google, I'm sure it'll pop up. If you want to read the full article about a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and and things like that with Juice, but it's in that article where. Um, they mentioned the 1992 interview where with Tupac talking about his father in this movie. So, mm. I mean, that was just the one that I was just like, whoa. Like, all these times I watched Juice and I never, like, realized. Like, mm-hmm. maybe Bishop isn't as crazy. I mean, he is as crazy as we thought, but it's a little yeah. bit different when you know, you know, the triggers and what started that. And to even know right. that about your father, for yeah. you to know it and everybody else know it too, Mm-hmm. Ooh, fuck. Mm-hmm. that's one big thing in this film like the whole community as far as like your business ain't your business there's mm-hmm. countless nah. instances where people are hearing stuff about themselves because other people spread it they spread that yeah. fire like even yeah. even Q's little brother Ooh. I heard you got arrested well you hear that I like mean, he naming mm-hmm. people he heard it from right, like, this right. Has gotta be well, seven you know what I mean? That's that's mm-hmm. that was that's what trip was. That was the, the thing of trip. Trip can get the info out before cat can lick his ass and his tongue already in it. Shout out to uh mm-hmm. the old southern sayings. <laughs> but for nah, real, yeah, that's real. Like that the, was the DJ. Crazy. Yeah, the DJ competition when he said, I heard you got that gig, and he was like, Hold on, I just left. <laughs> I, I just, just left. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Jeez. the fact that they thought Q was the that Q killed Raheem, the like I said, mm-hmm. I mentioned Q's little brother. Um, all types of stuff, man, that was going on. So that was that played a major theme, and I just always find that interesting. But um, yeah, for all y'all out there, Bishop, kind of get a little bit more information yeah. on him. Damn, and that motherfucker was nuts, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Raheem, obviously, like I, I guess Raheem was the de facto the leader. leader of the pack. Yeah, he was the leader of the pack. <laughs> the leader I was leader of the he's the leader. Which makes sense as to why he's the one that had to die. Yeah. Because he's the only one mm-hmm. that can kind of tell uh, Bishop what to do. And I was writing down a whole lot of examples. Like, he broke up the Rodimez fight. For some reason, Rodimez, mm-hmm. and I don't know why Rodimez just never stole on, like, he always pulled up with six, seven people. Like, yeah. why you just don't steal on Bishop if you got this many issues? Uh, yeah, but I mean, that jumping is. It is lame. Don't get me wrong, lame. but like, what you want to mm-hmm. do? Because you, if I steal on you and whoop your ass, I know your dude's coming in. So, like, why are, yep. you, pull, why are you pulling up on me every day? Right. And you know my crew, and obviously Raheem came and said, it's cool, he ain't mean it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, like, like, hell, I ain't mean it, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> he has the baby, so he's obviously, like, looked at as the oldest. Um, mm-hmm. He tells Bishop they ain't going nowhere without steel when they waiting for him to come out of school. Um, he stopped the crew from going in to help Liz. Like, I ain't letting y'all get caught up in that. Like, he was like the old, the big mm-hmm. brother in the sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he had Bishop and Q squash in the steel's crib. Like, he was making all the moves. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I wrote down that steel is the merch of the wrecking crew. That's a disrespect. That's disrespect <laughs> merch. That the is. Mom, I felt like they were shitting on steel. They were. He was definitely. <laughs> was. He was the butt of the joke to the point at thirty at thirty five, about to be thirty six. It bothered me. Yeah, you know what I'm like as an adult, it bothers me. As a young person, as a kid, you get the jokes, ha ha. And now I'm like, damn, man, y'all chill, ease up on school. Uh, chill on, on steel. steel. Come on, man. Okay. It's funny, um, like you said, as you get older, it does, it does bother you. And the craziest part, I'm glad they put the scene in where they waited on him, and Raheem said, "No, we ain't going nowhere without steel." Because at first, I'm like. Are they just keeping him around to fuck with him? Like, is that why? And then that scene, I was like, all right, house. they rock with him a little bit. Yeah. Even going in his house, bro. Like, come damn, on, I you can't come eat up my food. You see what type of pops he had? Like, come on, right? Man. Sheesh. I'm glad man, they show that think- scene. What happened to my vase? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I want to see that scene for real. <laughs> But that's how it is, especially like in those teenage years. Like, there's always that mm-hmm. one person that doesn't necessarily fit, but they kind of yeah. the push over. Yeah. Um, you know, like you just mentioned, school going to his crib. Like Raheem said, "Let's go somewhere to eat." Like, let's go go to Steel Crib. I think yeah. I think Bishop even said something. You that fat and you ain't got nothing to eat at home, like. <laughs> Something like that. They was just on his. They made like a. They million caught that nigga fat forty eight times in the first twenty minutes. Like God, this. Yeah. <laughs> like even you know it's crazy. They really did steal dirty because the first time we see steal on camera, his brother called. Get your fat. You just got to be fat. smelling like that, man. Like yeah, damn, bro. Him. They was on steel ass, man. Shout out to steel, but steel was definitely the, the meek. Um, they definitely went out of their way to make sure we knew that, like in the yeah. interrogation scene. Like they knew they yeah. was a good cop, bad cop. They knew how to get the steel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Steel, man. He was the most vulnerable. He should have been in school too. Yeah. Like school was. Well, he short. was going. <laughs> well, yeah, he got caught. Like just the fact I don't even know how he missed all them truancy officers. Because he yeah. was so engulfed in that game that apparently they were betting on. So. This how you make a little bread. And Bishop asked, like, nigga, you gonna be my ass if I win? Yeah, we sharing this kind of money either way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why is you gonna whip my ass for me and you? Fuck that. And that's why you need a Q, I guess, transitioning the Q to kind of balance that out. Like Q is the mm-hmm. one that's um school you mentioned earlier. Go ahead and just get into it. School, I mean, uh, Q kind of had the most juice out of everybody for real anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was uh, crazy that Q was hanging with them, bro. He had the most, especially for a high schooler. He had all the juice, nigga. Mm-hmm. You see his, you see his, uh, his gear. His gear was fly. You feel me? Uh, he was, he was knocking off the the baddest of them all. The forty year old <laughs> woman. <laughs> the forty year old woman. Though. You feel me? Um, oh, and he could. As much as his his uh his his boys was dogging him on that DJ tip, that was the shit back in '92. Mm-hmm. He was that guy. Motherfuckers yeah. wanted to be a DJ before and they he wanted was to be nice. a rapper. A lot of people don't believe yeah. that. Now yeah, he was that's nice. the part like, that I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about DJing, but if, if y'all say so, yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's the DJ. I'm the rapper. It was always a DJ name before the MC. Like mm-hmm. always, like Rakim was one of the best people to ever pick up a mic. Eric B and Rakim, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was always that. So that was really a thing. Um, Rachel, you just made the point. He was nice, so he had a talent. He recognized his talent mm-hmm. early on. He was ambitious about it, mm-hmm. um, and he had the best sense of self. As yeah. much as you could for a 17 year old, as much as you yeah. could, he was the most level headed. He was the yeah. one, like to the point when you watch the scene with him and Flip. At the end, when he's uh mm-hmm. get a word trying to get a word to Bishop, like it should be very obvious that you should know Q ain't this type of dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But Q yeah. even tried to tell him. He said, "I don't know that." <laughs> like, hey, shout out to Flip. Yeah. That's what I'd have said too. Like, I think mean, I don't know. Right? What he did I ain't there? Hey, Trip told him I know a lot of killers. <laughs> yeah, you know me yeah, since I was uh, fifth grade or whatever. I know a lot of killers since they was kids. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? Q was the most relatable for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't knocking off like grown women in high school, but 
as far as just the overall persona, like his level headedness, just being that even voice in the crew, standing up for the ones that can't really talk, but still being uh, cool enough to like, I ain't even getting involved with this crazy niggas drama today. Like I'm just yeah. going to let it ride. Um, mm-hmm. All of that. Yeah. It just kind of that. Yeah. That was rich. That was high school rich right there. Um, guy. Ray with the side guy, the right side eye. School teller, man. You already know. It's, cool, I, it's not about yeah, you. I was nice. thinking of my own high school. Uh, yeah, they ain't had one of me in there. Meanderings. They ain't, they ain't um, had one of me. Uh, bless it. I was doing a whole bunch <laughs> of shit I ain't had no business doing. <laughs> high school was fun. Including talking to grown ass motherfuckers. That's why I be talking shit now. Hey, high school was fun. Because you already high know. Because <laughs> I already know what the case for mm-hmm. things. All right. Um, let's get into best scenes. Oh, hold on. Did we talk about everybody? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we talked about Raheem, Steel, Q, and Bishop. Yeah, so mm-hmm. let's get into best mm-hmm. scenes. Um, school, what you got? All right, let me see. I'm gonna start off with let me see, hold on. Ricky, what you got? I jump as I jump in. Ahead, as man. much as I love this movie, you want to know what? I don't have a lot of scenes written down. And I don't know if that's just because I know, quote unquote, the movie so well, or if nothing just felt like best scene worthy. So I'll give you uh, what I have. So, um, Let's start with Blizzard robbing uh, the bar because, nigga, what? <laughs> you just got out yesterday. You just got parole. And this what you want. And I understand niggas out of jail. Don't be having options. But I'm sure you could have waited like a, at least a week before you started wilding again. Like, I'm sure you went on the street. Your mama or somebody let you come home. Like, come on, my nigga. What? Exactly. Um, yeah. And I have well, real quick, can okay. I can I say something about Blizz that scene? Yeah. Um, you brought up the point, and it's a perfect point. The fact that he's out there the very next day, like you know what I mean? You just got out and you just yeah. about to do something to get something in or uh, to go back in. Yeah, you don't have any options. And I think that was a big part of this film as well, just showing that mm-hmm. whole side of like the environment you grow up in. There's a real good book called Color of Law. I don't know mm-hmm. if y'all niggas still read out there, but um, there's a good book called The Color of Law by Richard <laughs> Rothstein, and it kind of talks about how the government segregated America. Yeah, and these films mm-hmm. are kind of all a part of that. And I, you know, Nas has a lyric like, I could have been Ivy League if America played fair. So mm-hmm. that always reminds yeah. me that scene in itself reminds me of that moment. Um, just because, yeah. like, bro, like, you just got home, just mm-hmm. not in 24 fault. hours. My fault, Ray. What oh, else you got? All I know, yeah, no, you're good. Um, and so. The whole series, the whole sequence of events of us getting to Steele's house. So starting from Raheem and his son's mother arguing and Q in the background to the store up to Q's house. Because this is where we really see that Raheem is the leader of the friend group. Uh, we see the way he checks Q when he's like, nigga, I let you have her, nigga. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just mm-hmm. like grown man on him. Um, and then you already spoke on him stopping the fights with Rodimez, um, being the voice to say, let's go to Steele's house, you know, and make be always having uh, the final say of everybody. Yes. We really yes. see that. Um, and Why then I gotta go the, get the cigarettes? Because you, because it's your turn, though. nigga. It's your yeah. turn, right? Yeah. Um, and then the yeah. obviously the fight at between Bishop and Q at Steele's house because you've already spoken to the passion that um, that Bishop had for we. It's the first time we really see how badly he wants to be the man. You know what I'm saying? We see mm-hmm. that maybe he wants the respect with the whole Blizzard thing and then the whole Rodimus first their first little altercation. Um, but we really see how he genuinely feel some type of way one about not being a leader because he does not like being deferential to Raheem we see that very early 
mm-hmm. but he goes along mm-hmm. to get along because this has been the crew for however long, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see Q, you know, he's more level headed. He has the most sense, really, pretty much out of everybody, like we've already sort of pointed out. Um, so that whole back and forth. Then we have the whole Bishop killing Raheem, that whole series of events. Um, and then Man. Q going back to school after Raheem's funeral <laughs> because, nigga, you can't work a locker. I'm sure I can't yeah. work a locker either, but I also haven't used a locker since 2005. <laughs> so, okay. He ain't been to school in a minute. Donald Faison yeah. said, damn, it's been that long? It's been that long? Yeah. That's, a, that's what I got. And I'm still elevated. I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, agree with, uh, with you on everything you said about the scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. Listen, it was it was... I started writing down stuff and all I kept doing was like everything. I just was writing everything. Like you yeah. said, it's just a magnitude of scenes just combined. Mm-hmm. Um, That's it. But one That's of my, it. everything you said, now I want to add in this, um, something that I've been, I've been reading this book and it's called Save the Cat by Black, Blake Snyder. Mm-hmm. And it talks about writing scenes and it, I, I've seen it in this movie so after they rob, they kill the uh, the store owner, Quiles. right? Mm-hmm. Quiles. Now in the movie, everyone's the bad guy at this moment, right? So they have to do something for you to like Q because he mm-hmm. they killed they killed um what's his name? I'm sorry, I'm I'm Quiles. fucking up here. They they kill Quiles and uh, Raheem. Mm-hmm. Is dead. So now you gotta you gotta find a person to like. So they they that's where they have my favorite scene is where Q gets blackmailed by his little brother. Like <laughs> that's a loving scene. Like that scene yeah. for Q. Like you know what I mean. You got the little this eight year old messing with his brother that that love that brotherly mm-hmm. love. Then he blackmails him and he gives it to him. Like that's just a scene. You have to write that scene so the viewer loves Q. Like you now you're with Q. From that moment on, we're with Q. Like wherever Q go, I'm with Q. Like Team Q. So mm. out to uh, that book for that because I never noticed that until I watched this movie. I was like, damn, that was a dope writing scene. So that's that's one of my favorite scenes for sure. Nah, that is dope. Even though I thought Bishop was crazy as hell from that point on, I didn't. I didn't. Oh look yeah, at the other sure. Three. I didn't look. I didn't look at the other three as the bad guys. I knew right away it was Bishop. Yeah. I saw they were shook. Yeah. I knew they didn't want to do it anyway, and they, I guess, going to your point about that book, they did a good job of writing Bishop to the one that you know his ascension to that mm-hmm. point. I think yeah. made the most Absolutely. because he was the one that was breaking bad pretty much. Like he was the one, yeah. That knew, like yeah. this nigga crazy, and they even mentioned it like the first Rodimer scene. Like um, he made a point of saying, "Like we know you crazy." Like so, I don't. He's got yeah. some kind of rep around you know the neighborhood. Even though at the same yeah. time he, you know, still mentioned to him, you can't even walk your own block without Rodimez fucking with you. Yeah, so, it's a lot of it's a well, lot of stuff. It, going on. it goes back to what you talked about, Rich. Like if if Rodimez knows about his dad, he's probably been dealing with that for a while. You feel me? So mm-hmm. he's probably had to every three years. He seems like that that guy that comes to school and gets expelled. <laughs> like that's that's Bishop. Like. He got mm-hmm. so much shit going on. He don't like school. He come to school, pull the fire alarm, do some crazy shit, like just to just so you know his name. Like I'm crazy. Leave me alone. That's Bishop. <laughs> you just said I cannot imagine not being able to walk my block without somebody fucking with me. It's my crazy. street wouldn't let that happen to me though. <laughs> wouldn't let that happen to me. And thank God, like I'm still friends with. The neighborhood people that I grew up with, um, but to be like in fear yeah. or feel like I have to be on guard or on the defense just to go to fucking Howard's just to walk to the store. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no! Would not let That's that happen to me. <laughs> you know it's bad because because even still clowned him, right? Listen, what? I know, I know he, you ain't talking, nigga. <laughs> listen, man. Well, obviously, we'll get to this film one day because it's a classic. It's a grail, so we stashing this one. But even that, I always say that about Friday. Like Debo would have got mm-hmm. shot like within the first five minutes of the of him being in the film. 
Like, there's no yeah. way Debo on my block, and I'm tucking, I'm tucking my chain in because I heard Debo coming. Nigga, stop playing with me, man. Anyway, yeah, we ain't. Well, I'm not even gonna get too deep into that. But Ray, perfect point. I can't imagine mm-hmm. not being able to walk yeah. my block or like looking around the corner, like peeking out the window. Such and such outside yet? Is it cool? Like, nah. <laughs> is it cool or damn? Let's go. Let me wait for the rest of them to get here. Let Let me wait for them to come pick me up. <laughs> right. Oh, hey, there man. was. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to Ray. I'm gonna tell you a story after we finish recording about that. Oh, shit. Somebody about we you. know that is somebody that had to get walked to class in college. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there. No damn. name, no blame. But I'm not even gonna tell the story on here because I ain't even gonna. Do this person like that, but I might be able to tell you. I'm gonna make sure I tell you. I'm that. about to be weak as fuck. Okay, yeah, you about to be super weak. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> as far as best <laughs> scenes go, I agree with both of y'all. When I was looking for, I'm like, damn, this is more so moments, and it's the overall story yeah. mm-hmm. that has to. Mm-hmm. It's all one story tied together. You can't yeah. skip anything. Like if you miss something, you're gonna miss the whole point. I think. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I do have. You mentioned it. Bill, Bishop's meltdown scene at Steel's place just. Explained his motivation. You mentioned that earlier school, and he just had some quotes. Like he was really, he did. You don't talk to. I'm. This is something I'm real serious about. People you love, the people that's in your circle, your family, your crew. Yes. You don't talk to them a certain way. I don't care mm-hmm. how mad you are. Mm-hmm. There's just certain things I would never say to either one of y'all. Like, yeah. You know what I'm There's certain things I would never say to certain people. Like even on a slip up, because I don't yeah. do that. Like so, you ready to die? Like what the f- nigga? What? Yeah, yeah, that's the first thing. Like, I'm not nah. You, we ain't crew no more. None of that. Like, yeah, you ain't. I don't want to kick it with your skate with your nothing. Exactly. That man said, <laughs> hey, I ain't yeah. trying to tell you. I ain't trying to tell you shit. I will tell your mama you I ain't. Tell shit. your mama you ain't shit. Come on, what? Man. <laughs> nah, man. But that that whole that whole blow up there. I have that. Um, it's so the many scene quotes. after Bishop shoots Raheem, and they realize Bishop is lost. Kind of like in that when. He's really lost. He's pulling the cue. Tell him, I, I warn you. Y'all saw him pull up on me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That whole moment, just because Bishop hit that turning point. Um, mm-hmm. I think we all can agree that the the school I ain't shit scene is probably the best and most memorable in this film. Yeah. That is that a given? Most memorable in this film? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Got you. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than those two, because I think Omar Epps and Tupac were the best actors in the whole film. Mm-hmm. And just having them together in that scene. First of all, um, Q, man, you got to get your peripheral vision up, man. Get your awareness up. Like, straight up. There's no to way be acting that. like that? There's no mm-hmm. way you shouldn't see Bishop walking up to your lock. I know your door <laughs> open. Well, now it's for cinematic effect, but I need you to be a little bit more alert, my guy. And... um now let me say this. Let me not to cut you off and and kind of backtrack, but we got to give uh Steel his props cuz Steel did his thing, bro. Like yeah, specifically that jump that that jump scene where like uh Bishop goes to touch him and he jumps. Yeah. Like bro, he he did his thing cuz he pissed me off. Like I I don't want Steel with me. <laughs> Nah, he shouldn't have been around, but they know he can get over on him. So yeah. I mean, you don't want to do no crime with Steel. Yeah. That's the that and that, but that goes Obviously. to show that they 16, 17. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 17 years old. You said what school? Mm-hmm. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I missed something. You said. No, I said remember Steel said Raheem's name in during the robbery. Oh, okay. Got you. Oh, yeah, he sure did. He sure did. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, the the I ain't shit speak like the. You know what? When you said that earlier, I was tripping. Right, <laughs> that whole monologue that you know what I mean. But you know, I, yes. I, you know what? I realized I am crazy. And you know what? I don't give a fuck. Give a fuck. I don't give a fuck mm-hmm. about you. I don't give a fuck about steel. I don't give a fuck about Raheem. Fuck about shit, I don't give a fuck about myself. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't shit. I, and I ain't uh, never gonna be shit. What do you say? Uh, and and as soon as I decide, you, you, uh-huh. you a lesser piece of shit than me. So as soon as I nah, decide, you, you less of a man to me. Yeah, you less of oh, a man to me. Man. So when I decide you ain't shit, Bye. what if somebody tells you? Bro, I can't imagine somebody coming up to my locker and telling me that. That shit is crazy. Why did that nigga was crazy when he was staring at his daddy? What the fuck? I talk bad. a lot of like, yeah. I talk a lot of um. 
I'll slap the shit out of you talk on here. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, because factual. But I've never really had to come up with somebody who was crazy like that. Like, I, I'm yeah. not going to sit here in front like I'm going to slap the shit out of Bishop. Like, because Bishop will kill me. Yeah. So it, if I'm not ready, I'm not a killer. No like, look, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm not a killer. So, you know what I mean? You really got to yeah. be, I got to be protecting something I dearly love or my own life mm-hmm. for it to get mm-hmm. to that point. Like, That's I'm not crazy. shooting for sport like Bishop. So I ain't even go sit here in front, man. I couldn't imagine a 17 a nigga walking up to my locker and telling me, like, anytime I want to, nigga, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> damn, what you do to that? Like, how do you respond to that? Sheesh. You don't. You can't. Because what is hey. it to say? The yeah, crazy you part you is know you know uh, you. your, boy, your boy Q thought that he was getting the work from him by going to school. He's like, I know this nigga ain't going to be at school. <laughs> Bishop was a hunter. I felt like Straight he up. was trying to be away, but also trying to um, further separate himself. Not necessarily trying to hide, but just trying mm-hmm. to further separate himself from Bishop. Like, no, nah, I ain't fucking with that nigga at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I guess that just goes right into my last thing I have is the elevator scene. Just because... Yeah. Like I said, there's certain people, you know, if, if, if you know somebody going to throw hands with you, then it's whatever. Like, we can do this. But when you know somebody will shoot you in a crowded elevator, then the people you don't mess with. I don't care how tough you are. No. I ain't going. No. What you going to do? Shoot me in the elevator? That man immediately pulled up his gun <laughs> and fired a shot. Mm-hmm. He Bishop don't give a fuck. Y'all. He told First him. Off, if I see somebody get on the elevator and they just staring at us, I'm pushing a button. Let me off on the next floor because I don't know what the fuck is happening. Let me <laughs> off. No, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly about to go down in here. I'm not playing with y'all. Hey, uh, shout out to the homie that was closest to Bishop, man, for pulling his arm up and at least contributing, man, or something because <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. That's wild. Crowded elevator. So you said the perfect part, Rachel. The, my man didn't even turn around. He looking dead yeah. at you. Ain't no way. Yeah. Um, best quotes? School, you got any? Yes, sir. I'm going to start off with uh, the, the snappy, nappy dugout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, one of my favorites, Tupac screams, this nigga scared. Classic. <laughs> this nigga scared. Classic. I, already, I still say that. Because I already got it, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> when he when he told Steel to wipe them tears, wipe that shit. Hey man, that, <laughs> nobody turned that shit that crazy on and off like, like Pac in this movie. Bishop yeah. turned that crazy on and off like that. You know? And as soon as he realized that Q was uh, <laughs> nigga, lift up that gun at him. Like, what's up? Nigga, I'm telling you, I will kill you. Um, I'm, I'm warning you. Uh, uh, especially, I'm warning you. I liked even when he was uh, talking to uh, Q and Steel when they were going back to the party and he was explaining what he was going to say to the cops. We can't keep up with a man at a party. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, he was on his shit, bro. Um, and I think the one that resonates for everyone uh, especially if you're a black man, we three niggas in the police station. It don't matter what happens. If you want us to be guilty, we'll be guilty. We'll be That's guilty. real shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's real. Mm-hmm. Ray P, what you got? I literally only wrote down three things just because I was so weak. And I think maybe, again, to just feeling like you know the movie so well, even when rewatching, but you know, you too fat to be smelling bad. Like, oh my God. That's how you open the shit. That shit can be weak every time. Um, <laughs> just because you pour syrup on shit don't make it pancakes. Don't make it pancakes. Mm-hmm. Man. And, and this may be in part because of its recent uh, resurgence to the Twitter timeline in discussion of uh, juice. Raheem's dead. Somebody shot him. Hey. <laughs> <That's sad. laughs> Just because all I could think of was the tweets and then the expression on Tupac or Bishop. No one, nigga, you shot this nigga. Raheem's no one, you dead. shot this Somebody nigga. Somebody shot him. <laughs> same thing with the scene hugging his mom's. Like that's yeah. the that same expression. Like just that. Yeah. 
I, I have that written down too, Rachel. That's one of my favorite because it's the whole, it's the acting, it's the the nonchalantness. Raheem's dead. Somebody shot him. Somebody shot him. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, even the, even... Samuel, Samuel Jackson always even... has good lines. I mean, obviously it's Samuel Jackson, but yeah, the line you mentioned. Um, but it just made me think about a good line that he had in um Pulp Fiction, um, mm. when he was at the diner at the very end, and he was talking about how he doesn't eat swine. And he said, man, come on, taste it. It's, uh, John Travolta was like, come on, it tastes good. He's like, look, soil rat can taste like pumpkin pie. I'm not going to eat the filthy motherfucker. Like, <laughs> he always has some kind of good quote about food in, in a sense. Yeah. Um, the stuff that y'all didn't say, um, <laughs> this is always, I, this is when my younger self saw this movie, but I never can get this quote out of my head. I was doing the Uchi Kochi, my friend. That's just always a classic juice line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blizz, <laughs> Blizz doing a robbery. Everybody strip. Take your clothes off. Hurry up, God damn it, because you look good. <laughs> that shit always gets me weak. Um, <laughs> steal at the end of the movie and when before Bishop shoots you. Don't you get tired of this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then the last line I had written down is Bishop at the uh, Bishop holding the gun up to Q when they meet at the the spot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Self defense, nigga. <laughs> so <laughs> all those lines and more. Ain't hey, nobody say you got the juice now. Because that's in my things that bother me. Boo. Ooh. That's in my things. Okay. Um, scene, scene stillery. Ray P, who you got? Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> okay. Okay. But um, honestly, best performance is Tupac as Bishop. Facts. That's not even debatable. So, not even debatable. That's it. I don't think anybody else. School, who you got for best scenes? Oh, let's see. Um, I would say Steel. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't have anyone, honestly. Uh, I don't. Tupac I just Vincent, stole the show, it. man. I got Vincent Loresca as Rodham Ass. Okay. I hate I'm, I'm talking shit. His he he he's <laughs> he overacted like a motherfucker. Like, yeah. bruh, he gets shit. on my nerve. What's what's the idea of telling the cops that I killed Raheem? Like, come on, bruh. Go hey, on somewhere. Have you ever <laughs> seen motherfucker? Like, yeah. yeah he was man. he was yeah, he was overacting like hell. But nah, my you know what? Low key. My scene still was George Gore. He was a little brother. Okay. okay. That's good. I really That's good. enjoyed that scene yeah. that he had with it goes to your point school, just making yeah. it enjoyable. And just real mm-hmm. big brother, little brother, especially at such a big age gap. Yeah. You know yes. I mean? You've you hurt my fucking arm. Like, what? What you saying? Yeah. You heard me. <laughs> no one they wouldn't this be saying is... that if mom's was around. Right. Exactly. This is a random sidebar. I feel like George Gore. <sighs> I loved him in this. I loved him in New York Undercover. Um, yes, G. G. I hated. I love my wife and kids. I hated how stupid he was because I think, and we really haven't seen too much of him. I mean, he had that Wayne's son spinoff show, Next Generation. Yeah. He was on that, but. I think that he is somebody, if he even wants to stay in the industry, stay on TV and film, I think we're always going to see Junior Kyle. He is going to have to work extremely hard to shed himself of that goof troop ass mm-hmm. dummy nigga. Like, oh, I hate That's when well. they get to him because he, listen to his accent, he's a New York kid. So mm-hmm. he, he, I just feel like he could have done a lot of other things. And I absolutely love my wife kids it's one of the best yeah. sitcoms yeah they, ever. I, I um i agree 110 percent with you i think we talk about it in our went the wayne's episode from earlier on like mm. i think that that's one of the things that hurt his career like he talks about it he doesn't he doesn't act anymore because of that like he's, he's oh okay he gets that type that 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 situation like um yeah. towards the end of the show the last few seasons they really leaned on junior for that comedy mm-hmm. relief it ruined his you know his career for real so it happens mm-hmm. yeah 
Amy Wayne's probably yeah. send him a check every month or two, you know, let him know. I it's mean, it's still love. a syndication. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. straight up. So he's still yeah, getting a legendary show. But yeah, some people get like that. Waldo, the dumb mm-hmm. friend. Like that dumb friend is probably the worst role you can take. It's the worst role to take. Yep. Yeah. Because you were mm-hmm. especially on the podcast. Waddle, Waddle reinvented himself in, in Girlfriends. If you know, you know. He, As he, was, he was nice to girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But, you, that, nigga, that's Waddle. Ain't nobody saying that's Peaches. That's Waddle. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And they make them, it's not that they make them dumb. Like, they dumb, dumb. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm never mm-hmm. hanging out with you dumb. Like, it's not yeah, even realistic. Exactly. You know, my friend dumb. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we got a new category, y'all. Go ahead, Rachel. I was gonna say we ain't talked about it. How old was Yolanda? All right, I was gonna say mm. that for things that bother me, but we can talk about it now. So oh. Yolanda was old enough to be divorced and be a nurse. And be I don't a know nurse. if she was a nurse, but she worked at a hospital. Um, and you're not coming off the street at 20, um, doing what she doing, talking to gunshot uh, victims. So right. Yolanda she had to be 30. Yolanda had to be 30. Looking at her ex husband Frank. That's the that's the quote that I didn't have is uh you taking the saving the kids shit a little too far, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. Can can I guess I can't have this in things that bother me, um or, or excuse me or things that wouldn't let that happen to me, but I don't know how I feel if I'm that grown ass man sitting next to this kid, knowing this kid about to blow my ex wife back. Well, you see how he was acting. Yeah, but like it's it's more than just acting, bro. You gotta what go. You, do? you gotta stay. I know that's why. That's why I can't say nothing. Like I can't put this in. Wouldn't let that happen to me because that's her crib. That's not my wife. I'm leaving though. Like I'm not even sitting yeah. waiting. Mail me my shit. I'll come back another time. Like I'm not about to sit here because if I'm Q and you you being a dickhead, like that's why. Hey, hey, she still do that thing. Like she still do that thing. You like? I just want to let you know. She about to do it right now. I'm talking mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Like straight up. <laughs> <laughs> like, he deserved all of it. You ain't talking about this, this Akbar too hard to say. Like, nah, bro. Like, a matter of fact, <laughs> a lot of shit hard to say. Never mind. Let me stop. Yeah, um, see, see. <laughs> um, that shit always on me because I'm just sitting there and I just my blood boils. Like, as a grown man, I'm just like, oh, I couldn't even imagine being in this situation, man. But yeah, she had to be about thirty. Um, and I'm gonna be all over real if we having an honest conversation. Okay. You look at these things differently as an adult versus when you're mm-hmm. young. Because mm-hmm. at 17, mm-hmm. yep. there was somebody, there's a woman in her 20s, 30, and she was trying to get down. Of course. She was trying to get down. Of course. I just am. Like at 17, I, I am at that mindset. That's the mindset I'm having. What? You know how much praise you get for that? Like, and I'm not saying that that's cool. Yeah, really. That's just what it is. That's kind of the norm for young boys. Yeah. You know I mean? Oh, you got this grown woman. Oh, you the man. Like not thinking about like how predatory and everything else that goes into that. And that's a real yes. thing. Like I, I said earlier about how they treated Steel as a grown man. Like yo, like mm-hmm. I don't even want you to hang with them. You my son. Not only like was that yeah. his girl. Like to the point like she grown ass woman. Like Steel had the house the house number. Yep. Like, Steel calling her crib. Yeah. She didn't know who Steel is by going in there. Like. Yep. How, what kind of relationship is this? Like, I can imagine if it was just some like, I got this little piece. I don't even tell nobody about it. It's just me and her type mm-hmm. thing. But they know her enough to know I got your number, right? Mm-hmm. It's a funny. It's a weird little a thing. Funny man. little thing. I get mm-hmm. it. Use nonetheless. I'm not gonna sit here in front like I don't get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like I, you, I remember being 25 and seeing like all those reports about like high school kids telling on their teachers. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, if I was in high school, I ain't telling. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, your mindset is supposed to change as you get older. You realize certain yeah. things, and you realize, yo, that's really predatory nature. That's it. Yes. If, I, if I looked at it the other way, if I looked at that as a 30-year-old man on a 17-year-old high school girl, I'd be pissed. So, pissed yes. the fuck off, yeah. Exactly. So I can't have it both ways. Like, it really is a fucked up situation. Funny thing, yeah. might I add to this conversation, Ernest Dickerson wrote this in because his brother-in-law, so it sounds like his brother-in-law was like super, like a lot younger than him. So at mm-hmm. the time of them making this film, his brother-in-law was a teenager. So he got like a lot of research from him and his friends. And one of those friends was having a relationship mm. with a recent divorcee who was a grown woman. And he was Damn. a teenager. And I guess in the, in the 80s when he wrote this, 
I guess that was more of a norm. And it wasn't really like a big, big thing. So he didn't, I don't even think they looked at it as something crazy. Um, mm. I don't know how many think pieces mm. I've even seen about that whole situation. I think Twitter talks about it now because we're older yeah. in a different yeah. era. I never really remember that being a big conversation in the 90s yeah. and early 2000s. Nah, me neither. No. Yeah, it's a Ray P just sitting there. <laughs> I was doing a lot of unnecessary and crazy things that I would be aghast <laughs> if my child, if I were to find out that my child was doing. Yeah. Um, and it's funny though. So when I'm at the crib, every now and again, if I see somebody who I didn't have any business talking to or entertaining in my youth, like, yeah, nigga, the fuck you be on now? I don't know. You was funny mm -hmm. then. So mm -hmm. Right, hopefully right. Your ways have changed. Let me see who you got up around you. You know, so it's a funny little right. thing. Yeah, you don't even immaturity. Back then, I thought it was cute. Thought it was funny. Like, ah, oh, I talked to such and such. They grown. Yo, yeah. you're like a dumbass said, kid. State, <laughs> that's the weirdest thing about being 17, 18. You really, you, yeah, you've gone through enough to think that you know everything, but you don't know that you don't know shit. Yeah, you look yeah, at it funny and differently, and like I said, I'm Rachel. You just kept it a buck, and like, like I kept it a buck earlier. Like if I was mm -hmm. 17 and I had a chance for a 25, 26, 30 year old, like what? Like I'm not even thinking twice about that. Mm -hmm. If I'm, if I'm mm -hmm. 45 and have a 17 year old son, and I hear about that shit, like what the fuck, is, bro? Like what's going on here? Like, <laughs> like it's going on. Right. Like, the same reason why in raising Canaan, Rock pulled up to old girl's crib mm -hmm. and told her, yeah. "I will kill you." Like straight Period. up, I will mm -hmm. kill you. Yep. So As you should. I wonder if that's something that was just going on in that time, especially in New York, because that's a whole nother series. And they emphasize the point of this woman mm -hmm. right, being a predator, yep. not only to Canaan, but to yeah. other people in the neighborhood, other kids. Yeah. Like, and that not yeah. it, it doesn't have to be New York City. This happens everywhere. And it's a real serious topic. Like, I hope we're yeah, not absolutely. light of absolutely. it. We, you know, we're just speaking of our own experiences and our mindsets and how they change. But it is something that just stands out in the movie. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is, and on the flip side, no pun intended, I wasn't cool with Flip on these young girls like that. We yeah, all in their ears, whis whispering sweet nothings like that. Shit That's how them old yeah. niggas be. Yeah, and that shit <laughs> went cool. Like, Flip, man, go on somewhere with that. Like, Flip was. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know these niggas. Okay. You don't know nothing else. You know these niggas. Speaking yeah, of, I don't know nothing else. Yeah, of, we got a new topic. Let's a new go. Topic, a category, should I say? Um, my bad, school. Did you have anything to say about that whole combo? No, go ahead, brother. You got I'll it. My mouth you speaking for me uh, as well. But new category, come see about me. Ooh. Dedicated to <laughs> to the lovely Ray P. Anytime we watch a film or a television series, and I see a moment or a scene in the film, I'm like, is this some shit Rachel would do? Some come see about me shit. <laughs> and there was one in this film, okay. and I got weak because I'm like, that's some shit Rachel would do. When okay, Q shows back up to your line, just knocks on the door. I want to see if you wanted some company. Oh, you you thought so? Well, you're wrong. Slam the door in his face. <laughs> Let's linger Two for a little later. bit. You still here? Yeah, yeah. That's some shit. Ray would have waited about a minute, maybe one or two minutes. I'm gonna see if you're gonna sit on the uh. I'm gonna see if you're gonna sit on the steps for a little while. And you sit here, I'm gonna let you in. Ray how bad you in. want this shit? Mm. How bad you want to get in this crib? Like you still? Yeah, uh, yeah. You left already? Oh, you want you want serious? <laughs> Is that a come? Is that a Ray P come see about me moment, Rachel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something similar may or may not have happened earlier mm. this year. Oh man! Like oh. I said, we gonna do this every time we do a film, and I see a come see about me moment. I'm definitely listing that, and we gonna have that in the category. We gonna have yeah. that, yeah. I let him in eventually, but what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Things that bother you, school. What you got? Um, I really don't have much. I don't have anything. As in nothing. I don't have shit other than uh, Yolanda being forty. Yeah. Fucking with you. Yeah. I really ain't have shit. The yeah, predatory uh, relationship. Other than other than the the steel the steel. Like at some point, you know, you got to oh, kick yeah. steel out the group. Yeah. Um, that's it. Speaking of steel, that bullshit he was cooking that really bothers me every time I see this. Um, him eating with his mouth open really bothers me every time I see this film. 
Like, I mean, it pisses me off. Both of those moments piss me off every single time. Like, bro, close your mouth. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why they. I don't know why they had to send Q to, to um talk to old girl at the record store. She was clearly on that ladder, not paying attention to anything. Just grab what you need and walk out. You could have just got what you man. needed. Yeah. I know it was to emphasize that Q was the ladies' man of the group, but um, mm -hmm. GQ. Yeah, grab what you need and bounce because everyone wasn't paying attention to nothing. Um, we talked about Yolanda and Flip. Q tossing the gun. Come on, bro. You dealing sure. with Bishop. You dealing with Bishop, bro. Uh, and you I, walk up on him talking about some we friends. It's me and it's Q and Bishop, <laughs> man. We ain't got to do this. He shot everybody you know, bro. Like, hey, still even said it. Bishop shot everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop shot me. He shot everybody. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Why are you tossing that gun in the river, bro? <laughs> hey, now listen. You all right? This this is the thing that bothered me. Sweet, ain't that one that the lady name that was giving out the guns? Sweets, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a she, she was played by Ernest Dickerson's mom. Bro, she was giving out guns, bro. Everybody went and got a gun. This nigga had twenty five dollars. He got a gun. He talking about you, Miss Jackie. You can't buy son. a slingshot with that. <laughs> you can't get a slingshot with that. And man, I'm not on. telling my mama. Uh, exactly. I'm not my mama that I know you, like, or that yet you yeah. say hi because she gonna ask me where I seen you at, and she know it. She know it wasn't the library. The store. <laughs> you feel me? It wasn't the store. Right. She know that. She know what mm -hmm. she do. Um, mm -hmm. just real quick, Ernest Dickerson's mom played that role. The reason she played that role is because she really grew up across uh, around the corner from Malcolm Little, not Malcolm X, mm. Malcolm Little. Malcolm okay. Little. She, okay. she knew a lot of the OGs in the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. once Ernest started hearing all these stories, he was like, "Hold up, like you can probably play this role. Just emulate the people mm -hmm. you let in and out our crib." Wow. So that was really her. So damn. Yeah, always That's a fun moment. Up. Also, just real quick, this don't bother me, but I just wanted to let the record be known. Like, if the truancy, if the truancy officers are coming after me, I ain't jumping no roof. Like, I'll go to English class. Man, I wrote that down. Right. Running from the truancy officers is crazy. <laughs> and they came in super deep. And why they ain't never try to arrest Flip? Because obviously, you harboring these little niggas, right? You know what I'm saying? You get, you look out here. They come. Come on, man. Cops would have been shut Flip yeah. shit down. Yeah, but they probably utilize Flip for other shit because they know that he the neighborhood know it all. Facts. Let, let me go ahead and correct y'all. His name is Trip, not Trip. Flip. Trip. I don't know why I keep Trip. saying Flip. Trip. My bad. Trip. Thank you. You should have yeah, been corrected. Yeah, Shout out to Samuel. We said Trip, I think, first, and then somehow it became yeah. Flip because we started talking about a butter rim. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, my bad, y'all. That's my why. <laughs> y'all, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that bothered me is the last line in the film. You got the juice now. I hate that line. Like, I you hate that line. Now. I hate Why? that line. Hate he the got the juice. Because that's not even what the juice is, bro. Like, just because Bishop gone. Yeah. Anyway, I just hate he that leader. line. He leader. Raheem gone. Now Bishop did. He the juice. He got the Who juice. he lead? He Who he lead? Still. still. Q been at the juice. Still. I guarantee you right now. If I talk to one of my uh the eighth grade players that I coach, if I show them this film and say which one of these four you want to be like, all of them will be like, I'm gonna be like you. Take away the grown woman shit. <laughs> Take away the grown woman shit. They all gonna be like, I want to be like you. Q. Q yeah. had the juice, man. Q had the juice. Yeah, he did, mm -hmm. but now you really got it. Cause the leader gone, and then Bishop, who would be the assumed next person, just because niggas know he crazy. Like I get it. It was corny. No. Nah. But and I don't, the dude, the dude delivering the line, the same dude that was in the scene trying to get the uh, the party tape. I don't know. It just yeah. bothers me. Cultural moments. I just had the plastic on the furniture at Steel's crib. Mm -hmm. Whole lot of culture in this movie, but that one's yeah. I would say whole movie, whole mm -hmm. movie. Y'all live with y'all, Marini. Yeah, everything, Thanks. all that significant age gap between kids. All that. <laughs> yeah, all that. Skip school. All, that. all the shit. Yep. Just the neighborhood. It's your crew. Yep. Any actors from The Wire? No, there are not any actors from The Wire. However, however, and the writer and director of this film directed six episodes of The Wire. There we go. Mm -hmm. All Probably. throughout seasons two through five. So, okay. Shout out to him for that. Greatest show <laughs> ever. Um, just want to shout out the soundtrack. Super early '90s, but considered a classic yeah. movie soundtrack. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely got to give her props for that. Trivia, uh, you got any trivia for school? Yeah, I do got some random, well, one random thing that I definitely wanted to um, point out because I think it goes back to that that big thing about Bishop. Um, the film's original ending featured on the 25th anniversary Blu-ray had Q hanging on to Bishop, just like in the theatrical cut. The major difference was that just as Bishop was about to climb up, he hears police sirens closing in closer and closer and utters the words, I'm not going to jail. And Q responds with, come on, B, don't punk out on me now and let's go into a silent abyss in the alley. The studio then forced uh, Ernest Dickerson to change the ending and stated that if he didn't change it, the studio would not give him nor the movie the support he was expecting. Reluctantly, Dickerson changed the ending and had to make the ending look as if Bishop slipped out of Q's hand instead of Bishop choosing to die. During the ADR session to re-loop everything, Tupac Shakur stated that it was bullshit, and Dickerson completely agreed with him, also stating, yeah, it is bullshit. Then Shakur stated to Dickerson, well, I got a scream. Dickerson replied, yeah. Shakur then said, can it be a half-ass scream? <laughs> and the Dickerson agreed, stating, yeah, yeah, give me a half-ass scream, man, because maybe one day I'll be able to put it back the way it was. This was their own personal way of protesting the change because they both felt that the original ending gave Bishop more power than what the studio wanted. Dickerson regrets it to this day. Man. That's interesting. Because it goes with the begin with the beginning of him saying, This is how you go out. You go out in the blaze of yeah. glory. Like it, yeah. it really yeah. coincides with everything for real. But the studio wasn't having it. I wonder why, because why do y'all care? <laughs> right, um, right. Yeah, I don't know, because he didn't, cause he he controlled his own narrative. But yeah, probably. um, Fair. I got a, I got a couple other pieces of trivia. Thanks for that school. That was actually that was very very that good. Was very good. Um, thank you. We talked about the method acting. Um, Latanya yeah. Richardson. Latanya Richardson plays Steele's mom in this film, mm -hmm. and she's actually married in real life to Samuel L. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Um, the original mm -hmm. movie poster. Of this film had a gun. Ah. Bishop was holding a gun in the original movie poster. There was a protest because of the, um, I guess, intentional violence that they were trying to promote. People thought that they were trying to promote violence. Um, so they air scrubbed it out. So now you don't see the gun. But those posters okay. were still in circulation. So if you have one, it's worth a lot of money um, because okay. those are rare to find. Mm. Um, the dedication at the end to Janet and Tamu. If I'm saying Tamu right, I hope so. Um, but both, both of those people died before the release. Um, Janet was actually Ernest Dickerson's fiance and Tamu Ooh. was a production oh, assistant. Man. I'm not sure how they passed, but they died before wow. the film was dedicated to them. Um, Juice World got his name because he loved the movie Juice growing up. So R.I.P. Juice that's World, scary. that's where it came from. And school, you talked about the original ending. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got for it. So mm -hmm. well, we said this during the Love and Basketball, but Omar Epps plays a character Quincy in this and Love and Basketball. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So um anything else that we want to talk about or cover on this film before we wrap things up? I'm good. We pretty much got it all mm -hmm. out, man. Absolute classic. Too high, too low, just right. The average user, or average user, average watcher of this film rates Juice 7 out of 10. Ray P, too high, too low, just right. Too low. Mm. Too low is Juice. So it's my score mm -hmm. based solely on nostalgia. <laughs> I don't know, but I got to gotta go 8. Okay. Let me ask you real quick. So... Yeah. I say the original four, or I guess five or whatever. We'll say four. We won't count South Central in this, but that early nineties, Boys mm -hmm. in the Hood, New Jack City, Juice, Minister Society. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite out of all those? <clears throat> Don't answer that, Ray. Don't answer that. Well, I already did. I didn't hear you. What you say? Oh, I said Boys in the Hood. What you got, school? Minister Society. I don't got an answer for y'all. I just wanted to see what y'all was gonna say. I knew I knew he wasn't gonna answer. That's why I told you not to answer. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Boys in the hood. I don't did we say South Central? I don't love South Central. Yeah, I, I took it out because I don't think it's on oh, the same okay. level as those four. 
I don't even think New Jack City is kind of in the same genre. I, I might go Menace as well, but Boys, man, Boys in the Hood is what that's is the one. Thing? That's that's it. That's the blueprint. Yeah, that's the blueprint. And there's so many classic on me. Let me we quoted Boys in the Hood in this episode. Let me out, though. <laughs> yeah, let me oh, let me out. I literally um, say that all the time. <laughs> school, what you got? What? As far as your rating. rating. Oh, I got it as an eight. I'm with you. Eight. eight. Same. I'm it's going little, eight. It's a little too low. <clears throat> yeah. A little too low. Juice is juice. It's a film noir. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I think if you include a little bit more of that Bishop father storyline, it makes a lot more sense as far as the connectivity mm-hmm. of it. But yeah. it's not meant to, um, as we discussed, be scene by scene. It's just an overall arc and story. And it's for mm-hmm. teenagers. It's really, like I said, you should, this is a peer pressure movie. Like just the the idea of still trying to figure out who you are and how your environment um, plays a role in that. Um, mm-hmm. I think there was a quote in that Rock the Bells interview that I was talking about or article where they was just talking about like, you know, the biggest um, battle sometimes is with, is within, whether yeah. it's within mm-hmm. your own self or within your own circle. And we saw mm-hmm. both of that in this film. So it, it, it carries a message that's going to stand the test of time. You can always Absolutely. show this film to somebody. Um, and they'll get they'll get what you they need out of it. And um, can't thank the everybody involved for giving us this classic. I mean, it's thirty one mm-hmm. years later, and we're talking about Juice, an hour and a yeah. half. Like that says everything you need to know about it. So, um, if you've been with us this long, obviously we definitely appreciate you listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I mean, it's we had to give it as just do. It's like like Ray, like Ray Peace keeps saying, it's Juice. It's Juice. Yeah. It's juice. Like, what else can we say, man? So, mm-hmm. um, shout out to everybody involved. Shout out to an incredible right. performance by Tupac. Um, yes. Like I said, Omar Epps, um, Khalil Kane, Jermaine Hopkins, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, yes. Everybody else. I think, yeah, did we mention Queen Latif and all them? Yeah, we mentioned all them. Mm-hmm. Um, D Nice, yeah, all that. Like so. Alexander, all of them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everybody. And it's the early stages of hip hop. Like, this is that yeah. early, you mm-hmm. know. Call it reality rap phase and stuff like that. So bringing the nineties in. Shout out to your shirt school. Shout out to your shirt school. So yeah. With that being said, with that being said, um, we will see y'all next week with a whole new episode. Y'all be cool. How y'all be cool? Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>